What's going on guys? Josh from IC13. Today we're gonna install a mount up, single gun vertical mount. First things first, let's figure out where we're gonna install our mount. Uh, today I'm gonna install this in my office here at IC13, roughly in this area. And for a single gun vertical mount, you only need one stud, so this should be pretty easy. One thing to note, when you get your mount up, uh, there are no instructions printed out for you uh, in the package. Everything is located online at www.ic13.us slash help. Okay, so the game plan is to take this 16 inch Daniel Defense and put it right about here. You saw me find the stud. I found this electrical outlet first and obviously there's a stud running here. 16 inches about here, confirmed it with a stud finder. Uh, and vertically, this is about where I want to go, uh, judging on the location of the clamping bracket being right about here. Looks about right vertically on the wall for me. One of the things that I personally like to do whenever I'm mounting anything uh, to a wall into the stud is find the physical edges of the stud, not necessarily rely on the stud finder because there is a little bit of issue with tolerance there. Um, so I normally take one of these picture hanger hooks, uh, probably call it a monkey hook brand name or something similar. And I'm just gonna poke some holes here in the wall to find the physical edge of the stud so I can find exactly where the center point on the stud is uh, because that's of course where my bracket's gonna be most secure, putting those two lag bolts directly into the center of the stud. All right, so we got a row of holes poked here that helped me find the physical edge of the stud. Uh, turns out my stud finder was pretty good. Uh, the center position is almost exactly uh, where I found the physical dimension to be. Of course, two by four is inch and a half wide, so from either side, three quarters of an inch into the center of the stud. Uh, so we're gonna start drilling some holes and uh, get this thing mounted. Okay guys, so first thing we're gonna do is take our diamond-shaped mounting plate Okay, and using a drill and a 3 16th drill bit, we are going to drill our first hole for the plate wherever we decide to put that. I'm obviously gonna cover up all the holes that I put in the wall when I was finding the stud. Uh, and then I'm gonna run the lag bolt into the first hole. I'll get this nice and, and squared up, and then I will drill the second hole, and we will have two lag bolts through the mounting plate into the wall, uh, and we'll put some covers on those, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, guys, we got our first hole drilled. Uh, next step is to take an included uh, lag bolt and washer, and that is going to go through the plate where it's counterboard. And we're gonna just snug this to the wall, and then we're gonna use a level to get it square. Uh, and we'll mark the second hole location. We'll drill that out, repeat this process, uh, and then we'll apply some caps to cover up the lag bolt heads so everything looks pretty and is covered up. Side note, while you're turning your lag bolts in, if it feels like it's taking a lot of force to crank those lag bolts in, you probably wanna stop and potentially drill a slightly bigger hole in your studs so that you don't take the risk of snapping the head of the lag bolt off. All right, so we got our mounting plate attached to the wall by two uh, quarter inch lag bolts. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is take these tiny little uh, decorative caps and cover up those heads so you don't see them. There are some tiny little ribs in there, if you will. Uh, so those do need to be lined up with the hex head to get them installed properly. So we have our wall plate completely installed. Uh, next thing we're going to do is take our mounting bracket and break it apart into its uh, front and rear halves. First thing you want to do is remove the red sticker. That is simply to hold the bracket together during shipping. You are then going to remove the clevis pin that is holding the two halves together. Simply press that out. 
and break apart your bracket into the two halves. You have a front block and a rear block. We are gonna focus on installing the rear block first using the included Allen head catch screws. The other thing to take into account uh, with which direction you're gonna mount your rear block is which way do you want this firearm to hang on the wall? Do you basically want it optic or rail side to the left or optic and rail side to the right? It's personal preference, probably more of aesthetics than anything for your place where you're mounting it. Uh, so the optic side is always gonna go towards the button side on the bracket. So if I mount my optic like this on the left, my button is going to be on the left and the bracket will swing open to the right. And the opposite is true if I put it on the right hand side. The bracket will swing open to the left, the button will be over here on the right. So for today's install, I'm a right handed shooter, so I have my sling set up on the left hand side. Uh, and so I'm going to keep that out and away from the wall. So I'm going to install the bracket with the uh, swinging feature coming this way, uh, and the button will be on the left. So hopping back to our bracket, if I want my button on the left, like this, opening to the right. That means I'm gonna put the longer section of the rear block on the right hand side, and you'll see this here in a second. Okay, so I got my rear block and a 3 16 Allen key with the included Allen bolts. And I am just going to screw these bolts into the threaded holes of the uh, wall plate. Okay, next step is to put the clamping bracket back together. You're gonna take your front block and slide it into the tang on the rear block. I like to depress the button. And depending on whether you went right or left with your mounting bracket, there is a hole in this clevis pin. That hole needs to be aligned with the hole that is through the rear block here. So this pin may be going up, pull up for you. If you had this the opposite direction, for me, it's gonna go down. And I'm gonna try and keep that pin, that hole in that pin lined up with where the hole in the rear block is. And I'm gonna put that in there. Now we're gonna take a spring pin and lock the clevis pin in place. So before you join the front and back halves with the clevis pin and spring pin, Go ahead and check the vertical play between the two halves this way. And if it seems like it's too much, there are two included round shims in the package that will allow you to take up some of that play between the two halves. For this step, guys, I like to hold my eighth inch spring pin in a small needle nose pliers. And I am just going to hold it there and give this a tap. Uh, you want to be careful to not hammer the bracket itself. Once you get close, we do include two spring pins, so you can actually use the second one to hammer the first one in a little bit farther, just in case you don't have uh, pin punches available. So you can see I just used that second pin just to punch that through the clevis pin and lock that clevis pin in place, uh, just past flush. Now, your bracket is actually almost ready to go. A couple of notes before you actually get your gun into this bracket. Uh, in your package, you will have uh, 12 total rubber bumpers. Uh, each row is a different size. Uh, there's sizes in there for a commercial buffer tube, mil spec buffer tube, and a pistol buffer tube. Uh, and there is a guide online in the help section that will show you how to select which buffer tube bumper that you need in your bracket. So we're just about ready to put the firearm in the bracket. Uh, one of the questions we always get about uh, the end of the installation here is, what is this tiny little thumb screw for? Well, this thumb screw is going to get screwed into the top side of the bracket, and there is a little angle on your buffer tube, and when you put your gun in the bracket, that little angle will be stopped by this to prevent it from going in too far and possibly scratching your buffer tube against the aluminum block of the mount-up bracket. So we officially have our gun in the bracket, um, but I'm a little bit anal, I'm a perfectionist, and you can see that this gun actually tilts this way in the bracket. Uh, we do have one more trick up our sleeve, which is the tiny little white set screw. That set screw will come on the bottom 
portion of the bracket here on the right. And you can use that to actually adjust the cant of the gun in the bracket. Okay, so I have my 564 Allen key here with my little plastic set screw. That set screw is going to go in the tap hole here in the bottom of the bracket. Now, we recommend getting this started, but then make sure you have the pressure off of your gun when you go to mount it. So this particular gun is pretty top heavy with that uh, variable power optic. Uh, so you can see how far out I had to come with that set screw. Uh, however, what you'll see is when the gun is placed in the bracket, that just stops the ability of the rifle to cant in the bracket. Okay guys, that is the installation of a mount up vertical bracket. Uh, only thing left to do now is to press the button on the lock itself. And this thing is locked, not going anywhere. To unlock your bracket, obviously keys. Put the key into the cylinder. You are going to depress towards the lock with the key and give it a quarter turn. Either direction doesn't matter. And now, simply press the red button and out comes your firearm.